Welcome to another video guys, it is blaze 2 I hope you're having a good day and if you are, smash that thumbs up button underneath this video and subscribe if you haven't already. So today's video is about the PS5 and specifically the DualSense controller with the new haptic feedback triggers. Um, I'm super excited about it, I'm excited about the PS5 um, but I don't know how big a deal it is going to be but um, the PlayStation have posted a blog post on their blog, on the PlayStation blog, talking about what we can come to expect from the new DualSense controllers, the haptic feedback and the new 360, de 360 degree surround sound um, system that they've developed. I'm looking forward to getting into it, but first, before we do, we're going to watch a trailer from PlayStation. It kind of showcases in a Hollywood kind of way what we can come to expect from the DualSense controllers and the new 3D sound. So we're going to get into that, we're going to watch that, this will be the first time I'm watching it, the first PS5 ad first time I'm watching it with you guys we're gonna watch that it's a minute long and then we'll come back and read the blog post and see what the blog post has to say so let's get into it let's play Wow, okay. Like I said, it was going to be Hollywood style. Um, let's go back and just go through the little things there at the end. Haptic feedback, adaptive triggers, 3D audio, and obviously PS5. So it, you're not going to get 3D audio through the, the controller itself. It does, I believe, have a speaker. Um, but I don't think you're going to get 3D audio from the speaker um, on the controller unless... And if, if you do, then... That'll be a game changer in itself. But wow, 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 wow. So let's look at the article now, see what it has to say. Um, like I said, the last time I played a controller or played a game with the haptic feedback sort of stuff, it was Forza on the Xbox One. It wasn't that big a deal. I think it could be a bit of a gimmick, but we're going to get into it and we're going to read the, what the article has to say. So here is the article on the PlayStation blog presenting PlayStation's first global ad spot showcasing key immersive features of the PS5 console generation. Developers also share how adaptive triggers and haptic feedback provide new game experiences on the PS5. Now I think this kind of brings place to catches PlayStation up to the Xbox. Um, like I said, the Xbox has kind of had this, the adaptive feedback triggers since what, back in 2006 when the Xbox One came out. So they're finally, they finally caught up. Um, so we watched the ad, it was pretty cool, a bit fake and Hollywood like, but I like that, I like that. So it says, you'll see the new console features come to life through a young woman's eyes and her movements. It starts as she walks across a frozen lake, feeling the crack of ice at her feet. As the character senses danger, the sudden explosive reveal of the cracking from the icy surface showcases the haptic feedback sensation you can feel from the DualSense wireless controller for the PS5 console. Sound then comes from all directions as the central character reacts to everything she hears, whether it's coming from the front, the side, above or from behind her, showcasing the PS5 Tempest 3D audio tech. Now, I'm really looking forward to trying this. Um, I've just recently got a, a gaming headset. Um, it's not the most expensive one. It's like a cheap $20 one off of Amazon. Um, I think it's called Empow or something. Let me see. Oh. Yeah, I think it's like Empow. But, my God, has this made a big difference when playing games? Like, I would usually just play games with the audio coming from speakers, um, the speaker, um, stuff like that. 
but once you get one of these gaming headsets it adds a whole new layer of immersion to it and i love it i really do and these were 20 dollars. i can't imagine what more expensive ones will be like and especially i can't imagine what this new ps5 tempest 3d audio tech is going to be like if you're wearing a headset it is going to be unreal um but let's go back to the article um the character draws her bow. The tension of her bowstring is a sensation you'll also feel made possible through the dual sense wireless controller's adaptive triggers. Now they could have really, they could, they could have really did that before using the the rumble tech, right? I mean, when you pull a bow, the controller has the rumble. Mo the controller has always had the rumble motors in. They could use the rumble motors to give you that same sensation, but I guess they're trying to advertise it as being more precise and more sensitive rather than just a controller rumbling you're going to start feeling it a bit more precision in the way that the triggers rumble or move or vibrate um but that's interesting um it says they're excited about us getting our hands on the controller um and they talk about their partners in the developer community um they've been working hard creating and dreaming up the next generation of games and how they're using the ps5 tech to make their games now like i says P the playstation is kind of behind in this um xbox kind of beat them to the punch god like back in 2000 and oh, no, it wasn't 2006 it was like 2013 wasn't it the xbox one came out but yeah it says the for the new Spider-Man, the new Spider-Man Miles Morales game, um, the creative director Brian Horton wrote this. He says the haptic feedback precision allows us to do all sorts of new things. In Marvel Spider-Man, Miles Morales will be hitting, hinting to players which direction attacks are coming from by producing haptic feedback from the appropriate direction on the DualSense wireless controller. What does it feel like to use Miles' stealth ability? How does a Venom Blast feel? Because the high resolution of DualSense wireless controller's haptics system, we can really push the dimensionality of the feedback. For, ex for instance, as you hold down square to do a Venom Punch, you feel Spider-Man's bioelectricity crackle across the left side of the controller, culminating in the right side on impact. Man, that, d that does sound good. I'm not gonna lie, that does sound pretty damn good. Um, <laughs> It's kind of got me more hyped for it now. Hopefully it is every everything they say it is. Um, I really hope it is. Let's have a look at Deathloop now. So the game director for Deathloop, Dinga Bakaba, writes, I'm really excited by the adaptive triggers and the haptic feedback. Both, both features that will bring some physicality in game experiences and give important feedback. Deathloop being a first person shooter, we do a lot of things to make weapons feel differently from one another. One I like is blocking the triggers when your weapon jams. Oh, blocking the triggers. Wait, what? The PS, the, the new DualSense controller is able to block the triggers from going down when your weapon jams. If that's the case, then my God. That's going to be cool. Um, to give the player an immediate feedback before the animation plays out, which prompts the player in a physical way that they have to unjam their gun. Wow. I don't know if that's... I don't know if, he, if that's what he means. Unblock the triggers. Like, block the triggers as in stop them from being able to squeeze them. If, that, if, if, it, if the new controller can do that, then that's going to be like... That's going to be from... That's going to really raise the game. Um, here we've got Ghostwire Tokyo, the director, Kenji Kimura, talking about the new triggers. He says, just as the name Trigger suggests, the main use of the DualSense wireless controller's adaptive triggers in Ghostwire Tokyo is for uh, active actions to shoot or trigger something, and we also use them to create a sensation of recoil. We're also looking at ways to take advantage of the adaptive triggers to express a sense of persistent energy or a balance of forces, if you will, and for perhaps actions such as charging, loading, and a sense of accumulation of power or energy for things. The haptic feedback in comparison to the vibration function of previous generations allows us to utilize a much wider range starting from the very strong vibration that is much more powerful than before down to extremely light vibration this way we can offer players very detailed textured nuances because of this our approach is different it isn't a transient or constant vibration level anymore it allows us to meticulously adjust the feedback throughout the game okay so it is it's like a higher resolution version of rumble which i kind of like it sounds pretty cool i'm not gonna lie 
Um, that does sound pretty good. Um, we've got the Horizon. Oh God, pretty much all their developers have basically started speaking about it. Let's let's go back to the screen here. Let's go to Horizon. Um, the, the game director of Guerrilla Games, Matthias Di Jong. Sorry if I didn't pronounce that right. Um, Horizon Forbidden West features new weapons that are designed to feel unique and play a specific role in combat with machines and human opponents. And DualSense wireless controller adaptive triggers will help us make the weapons feel even more unique and satisfying to use. Um, well, we knew that anyway, didn't we? I mean, he obviously never put much work into what he wanted to say about the, the DualSense controllers. It feels like he just got a memo in his email saying, hey, could you write us a small paragraph describing the adaptive triggers? Um, he's like, sure. Just type that up in like 10 seconds. <laughs> um, oh, Gavin Moore, the creative director of Sony Interactive Entertainment Japan Studio. With the DualSense wireless controller and the power of haptics, we can make the combat in Demon Souls feel grittier, darker, and deadly. Okay, this is winning me over here. Now you feel every blow as you strike down your enemies and cast each spell. You'll experience the force of a titanic boss's attack as you pull off a well-timed guard. Metal strikes metal when your foes block your attacks or block theirs. That extra sensory feedback through the controller allows you to know your attack hit home and your perfectly timed parry was a parry 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 was a success so you can react faster and more decisively you can also turn that simple act of pulling a lever to open a gate into a sensory experience a sensory experience um cool um i've lost where i was at <laughs> Um, this is something that Rumble could never do. It could never replicate the feeling of metal striking metal or fire crackling in your hand as you conjure magic. Haptics are integral to the experience to immersing the player in the world and adding to the gameplay. The visual, oral and tactile working together takes this new generation of gaming into the future. Um, I do quite like that. The, he describes metal on metal, metal striking metal and being able to feel that using the haptic controller. Now, I'm curious to know what that feels like. It kind of, you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of the Nintendo Switch when they said the 3D rumble, you know that new 3D rumble in the Joy-Cons? And the guy had an ice cube and he's like, if you shake the Joy-Con, it feels like there's a couple of ice cubes inside it. I never, we never did get that demo or get that sensation. And the only, there was only like one or two first party games that actually like showcased that sort of 3D rumble effect. I mean, so I don't know if they're talking this up to sound more impressive than it actually is, but let's read on. Um, Godfall. As a player, I'm excited to finally feel which weapon I'm holding in my hands without looking at any UI. I can also sense where an enemy is spatially, even outside of my field of view. So that's that's a big claim there. The, the new haptic feedback lets you feel which weapon you're holding in your hands without looking at any UI. I think they could be stretching it a bit here. I mean, come on. I mean, yeah... I mean, I guess, I guess it could, I guess that could be what's happening, right? I mean, you could feel the difference between a bow and an assault rifle, but you could kind of, you could kind of tell that already with the normal rumble, right? I mean, the, I'd imagine the rumble effect in a bow versus a, an assault rifle or a machine gun feels different, regardless of what sort of haptic feedback you have, right? But I don't think you're going to get into that granular sort of like you're going to know exactly what kind of assault rifle it is. I really I don't think you are. You might do. You might do. I'm I'm not going to say never. Um, here's Ratchet and Clank. The adaptive triggers are something we're excited to feature in Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. For instance, the Enforcer is a dual barrel shotgun type weapon. As you pull the trigger, trigger, you'll fire from one barrel and you can feel resistance around halfway down the trigger. Need a bigger blast? Pull the trigger through that resistance point and you'll fire both barrels at the same time. Okay, so there is some kind of resistance motor thing in there that, that does stop you from... that does add some resistance when you're, when, you're pulling, when you're pulling down the trigger. That does sound pretty damn good, guys. I'm not going to lie. I'm more excited than ever before. Um, let's skip past this one. Um, haptic feedback throughout the entire game. Most striking are the surfaces because players will notice within the first few seconds Astro steps can be felt running on plastic, metal, sand and even splashing more. That's cool. Um, so that is that um, studio director Japan. That little 
robot game. I don't know what it's called. <laughs> I don't think I'll be playing it. Um, here's Little Big Planet. Adaptive triggers have ena enabled us to provide sensations which match what Sack Sackboy Sack by Sackboy would feel in game. For example, when picking up objects, there's a tension to each press which conveys what the little guy is struggling to carry it. Similarly, when equipped with the grappling hook, R2's weapon mode makes the player feel like they're actually firing it themselves. And lastly, Gran Turismo. You know I love some Gran Turismo. Um, this is from the President Kazunori Kama Kamauchi. Kamauchi? Um, President of Polyphony Digital. I think the most effective use of the adaptive trigger in Gran Turismo 7 is for representing the operation of the anti-lock brake system, ABS, while braking. A typical ABS releases brake pressure intermittently while the driver applies pressure to the pedal. The adaptive trigger is suited for re recreating this pedal feel and it will allow the player to accurately feel and underestimate, underestimate, understand the relationship between the braking force they want and the tyre's grip. This could be a game changer for racing. Um, compared to the rumble force feedback we had in the past, the special character of the haptic feedback is that it has a bigger range of frequencies it can produce. What this means is that sound design and tactile design can be handled in a continuous and integrated manner. Whew. I don't know about you, but wow, I'm kind of blown away a bit by all this. Um, <laughs> we'll have more to share in the coming weeks, so keep your eyes peeled. Wow. So, I don't know about you, but I'm kind of surprised by a lot of the stuff I read there. It does seem to be a lot more comprehensive, I guess, than the words for it um, is, as to what it can do, what it can allow you to feel, experience, and it does give you some sort of, like, resistance. It can give you some resistance when pulling it down. That's pretty um, game-changing, and I, I think for racing games, it's going to be especially important, because with racing games... The tr having that, those analog triggers makes a huge difference when you're able to feel the throttle, feel, you know, have that precise control of the throttle, adding in this new this new element to it where you can feel the ABS, brake pressure, um, you can feel the brakes, sort of re the resistance of the brake pedal on your left hand on the left trigger. That's going to be, it's going to be pretty good for, for racing and I really hope it does translate to more interactive, immersive racing games. Um, I hope more games use it. I especially hope they use it in the new Formula One game that's coming out next year. Um, but yeah, wow. So the new DualSense controller that pretty much sums sums it up really. Um, all a few different developers from Sony's first party studios and such talking about how the new controllers improve the gameplay. It does seem pretty cool, but I still don't know if I love that design. I'm not sure if I'm not sure I like the PS5's design. You're probably gonna fight me on that one, but yep, pretty happy with that. Um, hopefully that was informative for you. We had a little talk about. Let let me know in the comments what you think about it. Most importantly, what do you think about the DualSense controller? Do you think the new haptic feedback and the 360 surround audio is gonna make a big difference in games? Um, I'd love to know what you think. As always. Let me know down, in, down below in the comments. I do read every comment. Subscribe if you haven't already. I mean, what's taking you so long? Subscribe to the bloody channel. And <laughs> smash the thumbs up button and comment down below, remember. So I'll see you guys in the next video. This is Blaze2K. Subscribe, like, and comment. Peace out. See you in the next video. Peace.